Hello for you, and welcome to Applications of Logarithms. Our goal today, I can extend my knowledge of logarithms to real-life applications in the various sciences. So we're going to be looking at the logarithmic scale in three different situations. And the first situation we're going to start with is earthquakes and the Richter scale. So the Richter scale defines the magnitude of an earthquake as the magnitude equals the log of the intensity, that's what an I is, I is the earthquake's intensity, uh, divided by the intensity of some uh, reference quake. And this little subscript here, this uh, zero, we read as not, so it's I not. Uh, not stands for original conditions, I sometimes think of it as the letter O, or conditions at um, a time zero, um, either way, and you can understand why they use the little zero down there. So I is the earthquake being measured, and I not is the intensity of a reference earthquake. Now, here's um, just intuitively what the Richter scale actually means. So put simply, each step on the scale represents a 10 times intensity change. An earthquake that was a 7 on the scale is 10 times more intense than one that was a 6, 100 times more intense than a 5, and 1,000 times more intense than a 4. So every step on the Richter scale is a factor of 10 more intense. So we've got a 3, and when we bump up that intensity by 10, we get to a 4. When we bump up that intensity by 10, we get to the 5 and so on. So two steps on the scale is 100 times more intense. Three steps on the scale is 1,000 times more intense, etc., etc. So we're going to have a look at this here, and we're going to do this um, this question intuitively, which is really easy, and then we're going to do it using the definition, which is a little bit um, confusing, um, but just bear with me. Okay, so the California earthquake that interrupted the World Series in 1989 measured 6.9 on the Richter scale. The quake that caused the 2004 tsunami in Indonesia measured 9.2. Now these are actual events. I went and looked them up for this question. Um, the California quake that interrupted the World Series shut it down, caused bridges to collapse, uh, had lots of damage done in California. And then of course the 2004 tsunami that wiped out um, hundreds of thousands of of people over in Indonesia and in that part of the world uh, measured 9.2. Now just looking at them 6.9 and 9.2 aren't all that far apart but now that we know uh, the steps on the scale actually equal 100 here's how we're going to do it intuitively. Intuitively we're going to say well the difference between uh, 9.2 and 6.9 is 2.3 steps on the Richter scale which means that since each step on the Richter scale is a factor of 10, uh, 1 is 10 to the 2.3 times more intense, or approximately 200 times more intense. Okay. So 10 to the 2.3. So what we're dealing with here on the Richter scale are basically the exponents of 10. Um, that were being measured. Now, if we're going to do it using the definition, here's what we have to do. We have to say, well, we're going to compare the magnitudes. We're going to say magnitude 2 subtract magnitude 1 is going to equal the log of intensity 2 over intensity 1. And this is a little bit different than the straight up definition I gave you before. And this is something that you might want to, to think about. Um, and probably I'll let you use a little cue card on the on the test or something too um, that you can write these things on so that you're sure you remember it. So magnitude 2 minus magnitude 1 it, and we're going to say that's 9.2 minus 6.9 is going to equal the log of the second intensity divided by the first intensity. Now you can swap these things around and then you're, you're just going to get small numbers instead of big numbers. So you're going to get how much less intense one is than the other. Okay. Uh, but here we go. So this gives me, takes me to 2.3 equals the log 
of I2 over I1. And of course this I2, in this case, I2 the big is the big quake. This is the 2004 quake. And the I1 is the smaller quake, which is the uh, 1989 quake. Well, now we want to find out how many more times intense I2 is than I1. So we actually, what we want is this division. Because whenever I divide a big number by a smaller number, I'm finding out how many times more the bigger number is than the smaller number. Um, so what I'm going to do is change this back into an exponent. I know that this has uh, a base of 10. So when I change it back into an exponent, I get 10 to the 2.3. 10 to the 2.3 equals I2 divided by I1. And that's actually what we wanted in the first place. And you can plug 10 to the 2.3 in your calculator. And it's approximately 200 equals I2 over I1. And if we want to look at it, even go one step further, say uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by I1. So 200 times I1 equals I2. And so that straight up gives us the answer. It says that the second earthquake, the 2004 earthquake, was 200 times, 200 times, there's an understood little times in there, times more intense than the 1989 earthquake. Okay, now the second example we're going to look at here is sound and the decibel scale. Now here's the definition of sound. The, or the decibel scale, sorry. And again, I'm going to move that little I naught down there. And this thing just does not like subscripts. Okay, the decibel scale compares sound. Um, L equals 10 times the log of I over I naught, where I is the intensity of the sound being measured, and I naught is the threshold of human hearing. That's the quietest sound we can hear. So here's our example two, um, and our first example with sound. A sound is 5,000 times more intense than one that is just audible. How many decibels is the sound? So what this actually says is I have the intensity of a sound that is 5,000 times more intense than a sound that is just audible. So I equals 5,000 times I naught. So let's think of this. Let's take this, which I got straight from here. It says 5,000 times more intense. A sound is 5,000 times more intense than one that is just audible. So I just straight up put that into an equation. Well, now I'm going to use my definition up here. This says L equals 10 times the log of I divided by I naught. Well, from this little figuring up here, I know that I is 5,000 times I naught. So I'm going to put that in here. Log, and we'll put 5,000 I naught over I naught. What I did there was I just took this value of I, which is 5,000 I naught, and I put it in there for the value of I, which is 5,000 I naught. I just made that substitution in there. And I'm just going to put a little star here and say from star so that we refer back to the little bit of work that we did up here. Okay, and these things are kind of separate. That doesn't follow directly from there. Uh, well, my I naughts are going to cancel. So this just says 10 times the log of 5,000. And if you punch that into your calculator, and this is just log base 10, so you can just punch that into your calculator, that is approximately 37. And we call that decibels. So it's 37 decibels. If it's 5,000 times more intense than one that is just audible, then we say that it's 37 decibels. Okay, next question it says, and this is going to be a comparison one too, that we're going to do very similar to the comparison we did between earthquakes. A jet engine em 
emits 160 decibel sound while Niagara Falls is 90 decibels. How many times louder than Niagara Falls is a jet engine? And I looked up these decibel scales too. There is a there is um, a decibel scale in your textbook and I'm, you can also get them off the internet and such to find out how many decibels of noise things actually are. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say L2 minus L1 is going to equal 10 times the log of I2 divided by I1. So we just substituted in here the two different sounds that we have and that's going to be the difference over here, the difference in the two sounds. Um, so what we have in this case, uh, L2, the bigger one in this case is the jet and the smaller one is Niagara Falls. And so the bigger one is the jet and the smaller one is Niagara Falls. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Well, we have the decibels here. 160 minus 90. Oh, let's get the get the right color. 160 minus 90 is the difference in the decibels uh, and that's going to equal 10 times the log of the intensity. We don't know what the intensities are. We don't even really know how it's measured but we're just going to say that those two intensities are different. Um, and 160 minus 90 is 70 will equal 10 log of I2 over I1. Now the only thing that's different about this one than it was in our Richter scale example is that I have to actually divide both sides by 10 and get rid of this 10 right here. So that means that 7 equals log of I2 minus I1 and then we are going to put it back into um, our exponential form so I've got a base of 10 down here I know that so it's 10 to the 7th equals I2 over I1. So if I multiply both sides by I1, I've got 10 to the 7th uh, I and 1 we knew was Niagara Falls equals I2 which was the jet. So 10 to the 7th, that's a pretty big number. Okay. Uh, 10 to the exponent 7 times Niagara Falls loudness is what a jet engine is if you're standing beside, beside it. Let's actually write that out. We get a 1 followed by 7 zeros. The intensity of Niagara Falls. So to find out how loud a jet is, the Niagara Falls has to be multiplied by 10 million. Okay, over we go. The pH scale. The acidity or alkalinity of a solution is given by the pH scale, where pH equals the negative log of the concentration of hydronium ions. This is the concentration, where concentration is given in moles per liter. If you've taken chemistry, you'll understand what that means. If you haven't taken chemistry, it's all right. Um, you'll still be able to do these questions. You just maybe won't have as much of an understanding of what's in them as... as uh, someone who has taken chemistry. So example four, the hydronium ions in blood is measured at a concentration of four times 10 to the negative seven moles per liter. What is the pH of blood? So you don't even have to know what a mole is, but I will tell you what a mole is. A mole means that these hydronium ions, these H plus ions, okay, if I have a, a mole of them, one mole, and this is not one mole, this is a lot smaller than one mole, because uh, this is going to be, if I take this number and write it out so it's not scientific notation, it's going to be 0 0.0000004 moles per liter. Okay. So it's nowhere near one mole. But if I had a mole of these things, that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. A mole is kind of like a dozen. A dozen stands for 12 particles. If I had a dozen oranges, I would have 12 oranges. If I had a mole of oranges, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is 6 and then followed by 23 numbers. 
and then a decimal point is what that means. Okay, so that it's just, it's a really big number. So the hydronium con content of blood is measured this way. What is the pH of blood? Well, you don't have to understand what the mole is. You just have to be able to punch this into your calculator. So the negative log of the concentration of hydronium ions. And in this case, we want the negative log of the concentration is 4 times 10 to the negative 7. And so we just have to... Um, know what that, uh, know how to punch that in. So let's punch it in. Um, we're going to do 4 times 10 to the negative 7. So that's how I would punch it in on my calculator. If you have any problems doing scientific not notation on your calculator, let me know. Uh, and now I'm going to take the log of that. So log base 10. And then we want the negative log of that, so I just need to knock off that negative. I'm just going to um, get that. So it's 6.4 approximately. So 6.4. All right, next one. What is the concentration of hydronium ions in a pool if the pH is 8.2? So we're just going to go the other direction. It's got a pH of 8.2, and that equals the negative log of the concentration of hydronium ions. And so the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by negative 1. So I get negative 8.2 equals the log of the concentration of hydronium ions. And then we're going to switch it back. I know this is base 10, so I'm going to change it back to exponential form. 10 to the negative 8.2 equals the concentration of hydronium ions. And if you sub in 10 to the negative 2, you get a really small number. It's better to leave it this way. So the concentration is actually uh, 10 to the negative 8.2 moles per liter. That's the concentration of hydronium ions. And we're going to leave that there for today.